guys, Rebecca Alvey here, back for another video. Um, and today's video is another bookish video. I'm gonna try and throw in more bookish content this year. Um, I know that was kind of one of my goals for last year, and it never happened, just due to life. Uh, but I'm doing pretty good so far this year, because um, last week you saw my books read in 2022 ta tag, not tag, tier list. Um, and today, we are doing the, oh, what is this called? The 10 book challenge tag. Uh, and I found this um, on the BookNut website. Uh, I just googled book tags and this is one of the first things that came up. Um, and it looked interesting, so I'm going to go with it. Um, the first thing is pick, t pick 10 books. And it doesn't say, like, for just, like, 10 books, um... I mean, it says 10 books that have stayed with you in some way. I honestly just picked 10 books at random off my shelf. But, um, yeah. So here's the books I picked. Philip Pullman, The Golden Compass. Uh, Katie Robert, Neon Gods, which I read last year. Um, this is Beautiful Chaos by... No, there's two authors. Cami Garcia and there is a thing a sticker covering up the other author, but I think it's like Margaret Stoll or something like that. I think it's Margaret. Uh yeah, that looks like Margaret. Although that was like stone. I don't know. Something like that. So, Beautiful Chaos, which is, I think, the third book of the Beautiful Creature series. Um, <clears throat> next up is Wild Magic by Tamora Pierce. We know. I love me so much Tamora Pierce. <laughs> so, of course, at least one book of hers had to show up on this. Um, next up is Eye of the Oracle by Brian Davis. Um... I have never mentioned him in any of my videos before because I have a very complicated relationship with the books because they are Christian fantasy and I'm not really Christian anymore. So I'm like, do I keep these books? Do I talk about them? Or do I just let them stay on my shelves and think of them like with nostalgia because I did enjoy reading them and the fantasy elements are all pretty good. Um, but anyway, um, next up is The Devil's Queen by Jean Cal Calogridis. That is probably not how you say it. There's the author's name. Um, but yeah, it's about Catherine de Medici, who I adore. Um, so that book was really interesting to me. Um, next up is Codex by Lev Grossman. The author of the Magician series, um, a book about, another book about, about which I have complex feelings. Um, the next book is a, another historical, actually, actually, um, that is The Constant Princess by Philippa Gregory. Um, while I don't have complex feelings about the book, I have complex feelings about the author. We won't get into that here, though. Um, the next book is another Tamora Pierce. Um, it is Trickster's Queen. I figured I'd put it on the list since I read it three times last year. So clearly it's an important book to me. And the last book in my pile is Graceling by Kristen Cashore. Um, I honestly wanted to put Bitter Blue, but <laughs> I could not find my copy. So Graceling it is, because um, I, I love the Graceling series, but Bitter Blue is my favorite. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take these ten books, and there's other questions, and answer the book based on the question. Are there ten questions? Is it one book for one question per book? Okay, so don't repeat books. That's gonna be hard. Um, okay. Question number one is a book that made me think. Actually, oh, I'm gonna shift these around so I get them. 
that's actually gonna be Philip Pullman's Golden Compass. Um, and really, I'm including the entire series because the entire series made me think about like reading as a child. I was like, oh, that's cool. Reading, reading as an adult, I'm like, whoa, this is kind of deep. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff in here that I didn't want to think about. Thanks. Uh, but yeah, so that one. Next one is a book that surprised me. Hmm. Shifting so I can look at all of these. Um, honestly, I'm like, I'm gonna go with Wild Magic by Tamora Pierce because um, I was, I mean, I, I was always a reader as a child, but I read this when I was 11 or 12. And, like, this is very much my gateway into fantasy. I mean, I did read Narnia and the Golden Compass Dark Material series when I was earlier, when I was younger, but, um, I don't know, this one just hit different, and it was less of a, that's a cool book, and a, more of a, I never want to stop reading, ever. And, in fact, I, I mean, I've continued reading Tor Pierce books even well into adulthood, and I'm still impatiently waiting the next book that she puts out, which next year, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Um, if I keep looking at the direction, this is where the prompts are. <laughs> Sorry. Let me scroll on the next one. Um, a book that made me happy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pick for this one Grace Link by Kristen Kishore because when I read this it was at a point where I was mostly rereading books. I hadn't been able to find a new series or world that really interested me. It was just kind of like I'm reading because I want to read not because I'm enjoying what I'm reading but this one like reignited my love for reading because I really enjoyed the world and the story. My pile is dwindling. <laughs> Alright, what's next? Uh, a book that made me feel nostalgic. There is only one that I can actually pick for this. And that is my other Tora Pierce book, Trickster's Queen. Because again, I read it three times last year. So clearly there's some nostalgia wrapped up in this book. Um, I don't really know a whole lot to say about it. Um... When did this come out? Oops. Nope, that's the, the prologue. Where's the... When it came out? 2004. So I was a junior in high school when this came out. Yeah, that checks out. Um, That was actually the point in my life when I... The last point I was say where I was actually really happy with friends, friends, at the time and just life in general. Um, the closer I got to starting college and being an adult, the less happy I was. And I've had, you know, friends that have kept me since then, but that was a point where just everything in my life felt pretty okay. So, of course, this being the book I read all the time. It would be very tied up in nostalgia because that was a pretty good time in my life. Okay, what is the next prompt? Uh, a book that I have a love-hate relationship with. Of course, every time I go to the next prompt, it's always a book that's at the bottom of the list. Um, it is The Eye of the Oracle by Brian Davis. And really, it's the Brian Davis books in general because um, he wrote four... Yeah. Either three or four different um, quartets following the same characters. Or like, I think the first two were following the same set of characters and the third one... If I'm right about how many quartets are. The, the third one was about the children of some characters in the first sets. Um, but like I said, these are very steeped in Christian... Like, um, 
mythology and just oh, they're very religious. Um, and on the one hand, like they um, they're also a very interesting Arthur re retelling, but it's. As much as I love the story and the fantasy elements, it's hard for me to divorce the Christian overtones from my enjoyment of the story. And now that I don't really believe that anymore, it's kind of, um, like I don't know how to feel about the books. A book that I have reread the most. I wish I still had one of my Tomorrow Pierce books in the pile. Um, because I'm looking at this, like, I read that for the first time this year. I read that for the first time this year. I've only read this series twice. Um. I'm actually gonna go with The Devil's Queen, the novel of Catherine Medici. Medici? Medici? Uh. I'm questioning how you say it now, um, but I don't necessarily know how many times I have reread this book, but um, I can say that I have read, like, in the past couple of years, like, more books about Catherine than about any single other person. So, again, I'm not sure if it's specifically this book, although I know I have read this one at least three times, um, but yeah. I read a lot about Catherine. <laughs> a book that made me want to travel. I'm gonna pick an odd one for this. Um, Codex by Love Grossman. Because, um, I say odd because a lot of the story takes place in the main character's apartment or the city he lives in, which is it New York? I think it's New York, although I'm questioning it because it doesn't actually say on the back. Um, but yeah. But um, he does, like, towards the end of the story, travel to London. And then elsewhere in the that area. Um, sorry, I looked over towards my and I'm like, why didn't I pick one of those books for this list? Anyway, um... So yeah, um, he does travel at the end of the book. There's also a, like, running thread throughout the book of a video game in a fantasy world in which things are very strange and it's an interesting world. And so, yeah, um, I would like to travel within that world a little bit because it was very interesting to me. And they do, I think, the main character and his, uh, friend slash love interest um they traveled like like a day or two away to some place to research something and so yeah there's not a lot of traveling but the places they went was like I want to go to that place okay a book that gave me all the feels I'm not going to talk about what kind of feels, but, um, <laughs> the young gods. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. A book I wish I hadn't read. Um, I wish I'd read the prompt before I went to this. Because, um, and this is also, I, I feel like I must have missed... A prompt somewhere? Yeah. I must have missed a prompt, although I'm just going back around and I'm not seeing it. Um, but this is the last prompt. Um, so my last two books are Beautiful Chaos. And The Constant Princess. Um, and I'm like, which one of those do I wish I had read? Honestly, honestly, 
honestly, I'd have to go with The Constant Princess by Philip Gregory because um, it was, I believe, the first Philip Gregory that I read. Well, I'm not sure. I may have read The Other Little Girl first. I can't remember at this point. Um, but I guess we know that Philip Gregory's books are barely historical, particularly like, the further she gets into to the the um Plantagenets and Tudors and series stuff like that series. Um it's gone from being like historical to more like magic focused in a lot of ways. And while that's interesting, and I do like my historicals to have like a little bit of magical or um like a unus to them to make them not just be reading history book. I feel like Flippa Gregory's books a lot of times presented as if it is history when anybody who knows the actual history knows that that is not the history. Um, I hope that made sense. Anyway, that is the list. I feel like I had to have missed something. Um, Beautiful Chaos and the Beautiful Creature series. I guess I'm gonna talk about how I feel about this book a little bit. Um, like, I'm not sure exactly when I read this series. I know I read it after Twilight and I read Twilight in 2008, I believe. No, actually, I lied. I do know exactly when I started reading the series, and that was when the movie version of Beautiful Creatures came out. Um, I love the book series. I like the movie, but I don't like the changes they made, which kind of made it um, pretty much impossible for a second movie to come out, because I want to see... <laughs> The entire series with that cast. But the changes they made was like, uh uh. But anyway, yeah. So that is, um, that is all for this video. Um, if you've read any of these books and you want to discuss them further, please comment down below. Other than that, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more from me. I post every Friday with a new video, and I will see you all next week. Bye!